In this video, we're going to link uh, marginal product and average product and short-run production. So if you haven't seen the last video, we had an example on short-run production. Uh, in this video, we're going to link okay, the marginal uh, product of, in this case, labor and the average product of labor, which we have yet to compute. So there is some form of link between these two functions that can be interesting in the context of short-run production. So again, in short-run production, uh, there's at least one input that we cannot uh, change in the short run uh, because of the, well, the shortness of the time frame. So in this case, we held capital constant. As such, the entire production function was some function of labor. And we computed for the marginal product of labor here last, uh, in the last video, uh, and it was equal to 120,000 L minus 3,000 L squared. Now, in order to understand uh, how these functions behave, uh, it's best to graph them. And in order to graph them, we need to get a sense of their first order derivatives and their second order derivatives. So let's, uh, since MPL is the first order derivative, let's get a sense of the second order derivative. So let's derive MPL okay, with respect to L. And we can get here, that's basically what we're deriving is MPLL. Okay, the second order derivative, and we get is um, we get um, one hundred twenty thousand okay, minus uh, six thousand L. Okay, so that's the second order derivative, and uh, what we do is uh, just for the context, let's equate let's equate the derivative, equate uh, dmpl over dl equal to zero. So we get zero equals 120,000 minus 6,000 L. So we get 6,000 L equal 120,000. Divide both sides by 6,000, 6,000. We get L is equal to 20. Okay, and what you'll notice is if we plug in, uh, so we have MPLL, Okay, so that's equal to 120,000 minus 6,000 uh, L. Okay, when, uh, when we're in the range 0, okay, say when L is between 0 and 20, you'll notice that um, MPLL, or the slope of the marginal product of labor function, is uh, greater than 0. Okay, so you'll notice that the slope, okay, of the marginal product of labor function is greater than zero. Okay, but when L is uh, when L when L is equal to twenty, okay, you'll notice that uh, MPL okay, MPLL is equal to zero, which means that MPL has reached its maximum. Okay, so the, since the slope is equal to zero, MPL is at its maximum. And eventually, if we have a value, say, of L greater than 20, you'll notice that MPLL is decreasing or is negative. And that occurs when L is greater than 20. So the slope is now in decline. In that case, uh, MPL diminishes. So again, in the first case, MPL is increasing okay, when uh, labor is just 0 to 20. So when Initially, you're starting to add up units of labor, marginal product of labor increases, but it reaches a point of maximum, and then it starts to diminish thereafter. Okay, so uh, that gives a short grasp of um, the behavior of MPL. So let's now turn to, uh, let's now turn to uh, APL. So the average product of labor can be obtained by dividing the total product of labor function with respect or uh, divided by labor, which is essentially your production function, your short-run production function divided by L. And that equals uh, six. So remember, our total product of labor function from the last video, that's 60,000 L minus 1,000 L squared divided by L. Okay, and we get an average product of labor function equal to 60,000 L minus 1,000 L squared. Okay, so that's our average product of labor function. As I said, in order for us to get a grasp of how the graph would look like, we need to get the second order derivative again. So 
that's DAPL with respect to L. And we get uh, something equal to uh, 60,000 minus 2,000 L. Okay, so that's the slope of the average product of labor function. And then let's equate, okay, let's equate DAPL over DL to zero. So that's zero equals 60,000 uh, minus 2,000 L. So that's uh, 2,000 L equals 60,000. Divide both sides by 2,000. And we get L equal to 30. So this should be equal to 30. And uh, like with that, so APLL, which is the slope of the average product of labor function. Again, that's 60,000 minus 2,000 L. 2000 L. So you'll notice that uh, when L is between 0 and 30, okay, okay, uh, APLL okay, is uh, positive, is definitely positive. Therefore, APL or your average product of labor function is increasing. So very, very similar trend to the marginal product of labor. That's what we're trying to bring out here. When L is equal to 30, uh, we'll determine that APLL is equal to zero. Okay. APLL is equal to zero. Uh, and that means that APL reaches its maximum. Okay. It will reach its maximum. And uh, when L increases beyond 30, okay, so when L is greater than 30, what you'll notice is that uh, APLL, okay, if we plugged in 30 there, would be less than zero or negative, and APL would be decreasing. Or meaning, this is the point when your average product of labor function would start to decrease. Okay, so if we're going to sort of see that behavior here, okay, let's try and visualize that a bit. Uh, graphically uh, okay let's visualize this one uh, graphically okay so this happens here okay so notice the uh, the behavior of APL so let's zero in in APL uh, APL is increasing in L okay uh, notice at the start okay so when L is low so this is L so say one two three and so on okay at low values, both of the functions are increasing, okay? But at some point, APL will reach its maximum, that's here, okay? And MPL will reach its maximum, that's somewhere here, okay? And we know that MPL reaches its maximum, okay, when labor is equal to 20, okay? When labor is equal to 20. And APL will reach its maximum, okay? when uh, L is equal to 30. So if you recall that with the previous part of the video. So at the intersection between marginal product of labor and average product of labor, they will intersect at the maximum of the average product of labor function. So that happens when L is equal to 30. And that essentially is the link between marginal product and average product.